Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with all my gear laid out on my bed. I am prepping for my upcoming through hike of the Appalachian Trail, going through all my gear, making sure I have everything I need, crossing my T's, and I thought it would be a good opportunity while I have everything laid out to do a video of you know, the gear that I'm gonna be using or at least starting out on the trail with. This is majority of the stuff that will be going from Georgia to Maine, um, give or take a few items that will uh, be sent from my mom and I will send her a few items too once the weather warms up and thought it might be helpful for others to understand what are some of the items that through hikers use while they're on the trail. I'll talk about my big three. The first one's going to be my pack. This is a Gossamer Gear Mariposa pack. This is a purchase that I made this year. It is a purchase that I love. I've been out on trail several times so far with it. It's very comfortable. It's very lightweight. Um, to me, it's very practical. On the one side, you have the two smaller pockets. On the other side, you have the larger pocket. And then in the middle you have this big large mesh pocket. It does have the two waist belt pockets so more than likely I'll use this to store like my bars and stuff that I'll be snacking on throughout the day so I don't have to stop and pull them out of my pack. There are two things that I decided to add on to this pack. The first one is this Gossamer Gear. I believe this is the medium size pouch. I use that to store my sunglasses in the front pocket and then if my phone needs charge, I'll have my phone in there and I'll be able to slide my charging block in there too and charge my phone while I'm hiking. In addition to that, I did add on this side Justin's UL from Etsy. This is the smart water bottle holder. This is the 700 milliliter size. So I think I mentioned earlier that I would be bringing both the one liter size and the 700. The 700 will always stay on the front here to give you an idea how that looks. Then I will have this right here and I will be able to pull that up and easily access my water rather than trying to reach back here and pull it out of one of these side pockets. I will just have it right here. So I will be using the Thermo Rest Neo Air x Light pad as my inflatable sleeping pad. As you can hear, it is a little bit noisier, but it is one of the lighter pads on the market. So a lot of through hikers have this pad and it is their pad of choice just because of the lightweight and it has a really great R value with it as well. I slept outside last night, got into the upper 30s and I was very comfortable. That does come with this Thermarest pump sack. I will be using this. used it yesterday and it seemed to work out so I'm going to try it out on trip. The last thing I have is my Enlightened Equipment 10 Degree Revelation quilt. I have the color yellow on the inside and this charcoal gray on the outside. I did pay a little bit extra to have the draft collar. So you can see the draft collar is this extra portion of fabric up here. You're able to cinch that at night around your neck and it will stop the drafts from coming in. I chose this over a sleeping bag because I originally had the Nemo Disco 15 degree bag. However, that was weighing in at over three pounds and that was just too heavy to be carrying on my back for six months on a through hike. So I did upgrade again to this Revelation quilt. It is a 10 degree bag, 850 fill. I absolutely love it so far. Has a great fill, has a toe box so you can actually open this up to give it a true quilt fill or you can enclose it to kind of give you like a sleeping bag fill underneath your feet. Overall, I slept with this a few times and I'm very happy with it. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it performs and maintains um, over the six months that um, I'll be outside. My Nemo two-person Hornet tent and I currently have that set up in the yard. Um, so I'm not going to go take that down, but I'll go ahead and show you a picture of that. It will also be in my later pack link. Other than that, that is pretty much 
a lot of the gear that I'm gonna be taking with me. So what do through hikers wear when they are hiking on the Appalachian Trail? For my sports bra, I am going to be using the Icebreaker. It's a racer back bra. Uh, this is a merino wool bra. One thing I will say about this bra is it is not very supportive. Maybe even I should have got one more size up. Uh, this was a large. I don't know if this will take me all the way to the main, but um, for the first couple weeks, or I'm at least going to try it out um, and see how it works. So far, it's been very comfortable. When it does get wet, like from my boob sweat and stuff from hiking, um, I notice that it does dry out really quickly. For my underwear, I'm going to be using the X Officio Give and Go Brief. So that's pretty much what these look like. They are a wash and wear, so pretty much I would be able to wring these out and kind of clean them up in a sink, in a stream, um, just any way to freshen up when you're on trail. I will be bringing two pairs to get four pairs of underwear out of two. Wear one day on this side, flip them inside out, wear one day on this side, do the same thing with the second pair, and then you have four days of semi-fresh underwear. So that will be my plan. I know a lot of through hikers end up ditching underwear because they just are more comfortable without it. Um, and I know a lot of times, a lot of people have problems with chafing and so forth. So I'm gonna start with them and then see where it goes from there. For my socks, I am going to be using these Smart Wool hiking socks for my sleep socks. These will never be hiked in. They will literally stay inside my sleeping bag. So um, they're always dry and I will always have something warm to put my feet in. So these are my dedicated sleeping socks. Shout out to my cousin Dave and Lauren um, for hooking me up with these for my birthday. I really appreciate you guys. The next pair I'm going to be using is the highly recommended Darn Tough. I have two pair of these. I'm going to start the trail with just one pair. I'm going to save the other pair and hold that back here and have my mom send those out to me um, if I need them. And then if I need to, I could always buy a pair of these um, on trail. I am used to wearing the Injinji liners. So these are just sock liners and they help with the prevention of blisters. So if I'm wearing my darn tufts, I most likely would wear these underneath. The last pair that I will be bringing is this Njinji pair. These are not liners. They are more of like a mid-weight sock. So I'm going to use these as like my second day pairs. You can see they're worn. They're comfortable, but they help. The toe socks help with the prevention of the blisters. So um, I have a total of four pairs of socks that I will be bringing a pair of Njinji's, a pair of Njinji sock liners to wear under darn tufts when I wear those. And then I have my smart wool sleeping socks that will be dedicated for just sleeping. So four pairs of socks total. Next item I'm going to definitely be bringing is my buff bandana. Love the buff. I have several of them. This is the one that I'm going to be bringing on trail. I will use this um, around my neck. I could use it as a beanie. You could, and then I will also use it to provide mass protection on trail as well. Definitely highly recommend. Uh, probably will be wearing this a lot on my head as well. Kind of like a headband or a bandana kind of just to keep the sweat out of my face. Buff stays on my head a little bit better than per se, like a beanie at nighttime. So I am going to be starting out with this Carhartt beanie. Um, I did at one point have a Smart Wool 150 uh, Merino Wool beanie uh, at some point in true Tim and fashion. I lost that. Um, instead of replacing it, I just decided I am going to use this Carhartt beanie. This is actually my boyfriend who passed away in April of 2020. This was his. Um, and I thought it would be cool to have something of his while I'm on trail. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and use the Carhartt beanie. I just use this uh, to provide warmth at nighttime. And then if I need something during the day to provide a little bit extra warmth, I'll use this Carhartt beanie. I am also going to be taking this Adidas ball cap. might end up upgrading to a different kind of ball cap. Um, I noticed my head gets really itchy and sweaty when I'm hiking in this. I was thinking maybe something with like a flatter bill. Um, so when I have my rain jacket on, it will help uh, keep the hood, keep the hood up. So it would be more like this rather than this. I do have a, let me go grab it. 
outdoor research. I just think it's kind of a little bit big for what's needed on the Appalachian Trail um, in the Green Tunnel. If I really wanted to do something like this, I could have my mom send it out to me like on the second portion of the trail. Um, I am not having like an umbrella or anything, so it might be a good way to get some sun protection. It is in my like resupply box here of miscellaneous items that I might have my mom send out to me, so uh, we'll see. So I have the Outdoor Research Melody Sensor Gloves. So these are a glove liner. And then I also have these REI Minimalist Gloves. And these will be like my rain gloves. Again, it will also help with the wind protection. Um, I just recently upgraded with these, so looking forward to trying them out because I have not tried them out yet. The glove liners will be worn underneath, and then if it's raining or if I feel like I need an extra layer of protection on my hands, a windbreaker, I will be using these REI gloves um, that are Gore-Tex. This is the puffy that I'm going to be using. It's an Eddie Bauer 650 down puffy. I absolutely love this jacket. I've had it for a while now. I actually burned a hole in it in my last backpacking trip. Must have been on the fire, but you can't really even tell because um, I patched it with Tenacious Gear. It's right there. Need to do a good job at keeping it dry because um, if it gets wet, it's not going to be helpful. I should mainly only be wearing this at camp. I did use this last night as a pillow when sleeping and it worked out pretty well. It does come in this nice stuff sack. That's how I will store it in my pack. For the next piece of gear that I will be wearing on trail, Dirty Girl Gators. They are very dirty right now. I've been out on trail a lot recently and haven't really washed them. These help with protection of like rocks and so forth. So any kind of debris getting inside your shoe while you're hiking. I've seemed to love them so far. I believe that they're going to be really beneficial to me on trail. Um, I have a couple of different pairs of shoes, but while I have these in my hand, I believe these are the Lone Peak 5s. Lone Peak 5. So I have two pairs of the Lone Peak 5s, and then I have two pairs of the Ultra Olympus. Probably be starting in the Olympus just because I've been having like a flare up with my um, bursitis in my foot. Bursitis or Morton's neuroma. I'm not sure really what it is or if it's both or what got multiple diagnoses. The Olympus has a little bit thicker foot sole, so it provides a little bit extra cushion. But I do have these, they have the rock plate, so they have a little bit more protection when you're entering rocky terrain. So maybe these would be good for like Pennsylvania. These are the Ultra Olympus. I'm currently hiking in another pair of the Olympus right now. They provide me a little bit more comfort than the Lone Peak. If you have any recommendations, I have some foot pain um, that seems to have a little bit more comfort in the Olympus, but I've never hiked the AT, so I'm not really sure what to expect. I did do a lot of day hikes around here with the Olympus, and I seem to really love them. I do have two pairs of the Lone Peaks and two pairs of the Ultras already, so Kind of just flip-flopping and not really sure what I'm going to start in, but I'm leaning more towards the Olympus. For sleepwear, I'm going to be using this, I believe I'm going to be using this Smart Wool 250 base layer. And I also have the Smart Wool 250 base layer pant. A little bit itchy. The pant's not as bad as like the top for me. And this Patagonia Thermal Weight base layer, I love this. Like... I'm considering swapping this out over this. So would love to know if you guys have any experience between the Smart Wool 250 base layer and a Patagonia Thermal Weight Capeline base layer. This is just more comfortable on my skin. I have these REI shorts. These are the shorts that I'm going to be hiking in. They were on clearance this year, so I did pick up a backup pair if these were to wear out. I hiked in these all last year. They do have the pair of built-in underwear. These have been great for me. They're I think a 4.5 inch length so they don't really like ride up in between my thighs. I picked up a second pair. Oh here they are. So they're the women's active pursuit. Came in this coral color so I'm going to use this as like my backup summer pair and until then I'm going to hike in the black pair. Love this pair of shorts. 
So the next item I'm going to be taking is my mid-layer. I chose the Patagonia R1 quarter zip up. Um, it is a technical fleece with a micro grid pattern here and it does keep you really warm and helps wick any kind of um, drafts or anything that would attempt to, you know, chill you off. I decided to upgrade to the Marmot Precip over the Frog Togs Rain Poncho, which I used on my last backpacking trip. Frog Togs Poncho actually works um, really well for dual purpose, kind of a rain jacket, so rain, kind of a wind protection, and then in addition, it's big enough to go over your pack. Um, so that is a really nice option with this. The thing that I was worried about was it still being pretty cool and headed into the Smokies with something like this. So my plan is, is to use my Marmot Precip, which is a full rain jacket. What I'll do is more than likely I'll end up sending this home probably somewhere in Virginia and having my mom send me this. And this is what I will use in the summer. Um, it will probably be a little bit more breathable um, and just be a little bit lighter. For rain pants, I have the REI Telusphere pants. These are the older model, and I did see that REI uh, came out with a newer model um, of these pants this year. I wore these again on my backpacking trip, and I pretty much wore them the whole time. I use them not only for rain protection, but also wind protection. I am going to be bringing this Patagonia hip belt. It is an ultra light fanny pack. So I did end up going for a chum's wallet and I have my ID in there and I'll store some cash and my debit card in there. I'll carry that in here with the hand sanitizer, an Invisalign case, maybe a chapstick or something like that. When I'm in town, this will be good if I want to leave my pack at the room or at the hostel. I'll be able to take this and I won't need the pack. So for clothing, I think that is pretty much it. The next thing I guess we would talk about is my water system. So, or my hydration and my filter system. So I am going to be using the Sawyer Squeeze. This is not the mini. This is the regular size. This hooks up to my CNOC 2 liter Vecto bag. This is a bag that will be used to collect the water. So I will be able to scoop like this. This will collect my water. I will have my Sawyer squeeze attached to my Vecto bag using the coupling that is sold by CNOC. Screw that on there and you have the water, you scoop the water, you fold this over and then more than likely you're going to have your smart water bottle which I'll take my sports cap off and I will have this connected to this. So this would be my filtration system. The gist of it is, is this is the bag that collects my water, this is the filter, and then this is where the clean water will end up going. This is a one liter smart water bottle. I will also be carrying a 700 milliliter water bottle in my shoulder strap from Justin UL. So I will have my two liter Vecto, my Sawyer Squeeze filter, my one liter Smart bottle, and I will also have a 700 milliliter bottle. So that will be my water. And then again, I will have a couple of these sports caps. So when my filtered water is good to go, I will just put this on like this, and then I will just go like that. For my cook system, I'm going to be using this Tokes. It's a 700 milliliter titanium pot. Very light. It's nice. It has these handles that fold in. I have used this on trail a few times. I will mainly be using this to boil water. I will not more than likely be cooking much food in here. I will be boiling the water here. You actually are able to put boiling water into the quart size freezer bags. So this is the stove I will be using. It is the BRS 3000. I have used it on trail a few times so far. It's very light. Uh, the one thing that probably is not as nice about this as compared to maybe per se a jet boil, which I do have and love, is there's not an igniter and then there's not much wind protection. 
Then I will be using my Tokes Titanium Long Handled Spoon. This spoon does have the polished silver, which gives you a little bit smoother of, um, I guess you could say a lick when you're eating. Uh, I really like this spoon. It's nice. You need the long handle if you're eating out of the backpacking meals are just very deep. Um, and then with the spoon, it has this nice sharp edge. So it's not even a sharp edge, but it's kind of a straight edge. So what's nice about that is you're able to kind of clean the bags out and get every last bite out of your backpacking meal that you need. That's pretty much my cook system. And then I will be carrying this REI lightweight rag. I will be using this in my pot as a way to clean and dry and so forth. So I'll have that in there and a big lighter. There are times where I will need to hang my food. So I will be using this Ikea bag for my rock sack and this line here for my paracord. And then I will have a carabiner on my pack. I feel like I have so many electronics um but I feel like they're all things that I want to bring on trail, so I'm not really willing to give in that area. I could start out with my main electronic, and that is the Nightcore NU25. This is a rechargeable headlamp. It's very lightweight. It does have the three light options and the red light, which is nice. So when you're walking into camp at night, if you're night hiking, you're not really disturbing people. This will be one of my main pieces of gear out on trail. Next piece of electronic is this Anchor wall charger. It is a two port wall charger. I will be using this when I am in town charging electronics while everybody else is trying to charge their electronics too. It will be handy to have the two port USB charger just to create some more space while other people are trying to charge their electronics as well. I am going to be carrying an Anchor 13,000 battery pack. I've had this for about a year now with me wanting to do a little bit of vlogging and kind of tracking my experience while I'm taking pictures, trying to charge my headlamp and my phone and so forth, my Garmin and Reach. There's just a lot of electronics involved. So in addition, to I did purchase the night core 10,000 milliamp um so all together i have 23,000 milliamp um again this is from night core this is the nb 10,000 and then this is the 13,000 brick from anchor so bringing both of these and with these two, I would have a total of 23,000 milliamps. And I think that would be sufficient enough with all the devices I will be using. I do have the option to drop down to a 5,000 milliamp that my aunt gave me. So um, I could do that as well, but I don't know if that will be enough. So thank you, Aunt Mare, for the 5,000 milliamp battery. I just don't know if it's going to be enough right now. I'm going to stick with the 13,000 and 10,000 batteries um, and see how that works out. I will have that 5,000 as a backup here at home if for some reason my mom needed to send it to me and I wanted to send one of these home. So I do have that option, which is a good option to have. I will be bringing the GoPro Silver 7. This was a gift a Christmas or two ago from my brother and sister-in-law. Um, I'll just be using this for extra footage and if my phone's dead um, or just another vlogging device. I have a couple different chargers. I am planning on wearing my Galaxy watch. So I have my Galaxy charger for my watch and I have a couple other chargers for the headlamps the GoPro and my Garmin and Reach and then I have wire headphones I did not opt for wireless just because I figured with all the electronic devices that I already have this would be one less thing that I needed to to charge and I feel like I would probably end up losing a earbud on trail somewhere so I'm gonna start with these and see how it goes I'll be using these to listen to podcasts and um, listen to music and stuff if I get bored or out of my mind while I'm hiking on trail. 
Um, all my electronics are going to be stored in the Sea to Summit. I believe it's an Ultra Seal. Uh, I, I believe this is a three liter. Bag. Yeah, no, two liter. So it's an Ultra Seal two liter. So this is the latest wet bag that they make. And this is going to be where I store all my electronics. This is my electronics. For now, I'm going to stick with this Trail Buddy brand trekking pole. Again, they have the foam cork handles. They have the straps. And they do have the ability. They have the locking system. So uh, my cousin Phil showed me how to use the actual trekking pole tips. So that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah. They go small, so I'll be able to pack them down if I wanted to. Um, they're nothing special. Um, maybe at some point on trail, if, if these end up breaking, or um, the only way I would probably upgrade is if these ended up breaking. So far, they have been great for me, so I don't expect to have to do that. But um, if they do, I probably would upgrade to a little bit nicer pair, maybe Black Diamond um, or something along that line. So... Next, we could get into my toiletries and my poop bag and stuff like that. We can start off with my poop bag. I just have this clear Ziploc. It's an off-brand Ziploc bag. I have the Deuce number two. It's a 0.58 ounce trowel. This will be used in the backcountry to dig cat holes when I need to, to be a little bit frank, take a shit. Um, I will be using this to dig a hole. Um, it is very lightweight. I have not had to use this in the back country yet. Typically when I go, I tend to not poop for a couple days, so I don't have much experience with this. Um, but, uh, yeah, looking forward to trying it out, um, when I, when that time arises. So I will carry that and then I just have a couple pieces of the toilet paper that I will be carrying when times arise. So that's pretty much my poop kit. I will be carrying these Cottonelle. There will be 14, so they're just wipes or toilets, I guess, lingots. I could use these in addition if I needed to, but mainly I'm gonna be using these for wiping down my body at nighttime after a long day of hiking if I'm not having access to a shower. In addition to that, I'm gonna be bringing this Sun Bum SPF 30 sunscreen. I am definitely going to be using this on trail. I understand um, sun protection and the need to protect your skin. I don't really know if I need both of these, but um, right now I have them both included in my later pack link. So the first one is the Monistat. This is a powder chafing gel. It comes out like a gel, but it feels very, once it dries up, it almost kind of feels like a powder would. This was highly recommended as a chafing treatment while you're on trail. In addition, I do have this body glide for women. So again, I don't really know if I need both of these. If you guys have any recommendations, um, just let me know. I will be bringing this travel toothbrush that goes like this and some Sensodyne to brush my teeth. Oral care is a big deal for me, especially with my Invisalign treatment. So I will be carrying my Invisalign liners and an Invisalign case to carry my liners in. I will be taking a pair of eyeglasses. So these are the lightest pair of eyeglasses that I have. And then I'm just going to bring this cloth case to keep them in and hopefully they don't get too smushed around. But I am going to carry a triple blade razor, at least to start. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with not shaving my legs. So um, I can see ditching this at some point um, or not needing it at all just because I wouldn't be shaving too much. Um, but I am going to start with it and see where it goes. The next item I'm going to bring is this Nivea Face, Body, and Hands Moisturizing Cream. So the nice thing about this is it's very lightweight and it's like a three in one. So it's not like I'm bringing a separate lotion for my face and for my body. It's a hand, body and face lotion. So i um, definitely going to start with it. Next, I will have this attached to my pack. It's just the Purell hand sanitizer with the gel clip on that you could clip onto your pack. So 
I need to use this during the day, before I eat lunch, after I go to the bathroom, I will have hand sanitizer at all times. So I had a wet brush like this. What I ended up doing is popping that middle portion out and cutting it in half. So I have half of it up on my dresser that I've been using for like the past week, kind of just get used to brushing my hair with just something so little. Um, but this is what I'm gonna be using for my hairbrush on trail, at least to start. I think this will work out good. And then of course I will be carrying some chapstick. So I will be using this Kula cloth. What this is, is actually a pea rag for women in the back country. So um, rather than like a drip and dry method or a squat drip and dry method, um, shake and dry, um, you have this to wipe down with. So it unfolds like this, clips up. So you're using the inside portion and you're able to snap that up and then clip it onto the back of your pack. So. Definitely, I've used this already a few times on trail. It's just nice to have something to wipe down with. This is my first aid kit. Some first aid items and a few personal care items. I got this little zipper pouch from Granite Gear when I got my air zip pouch for my food. I guess I will go into all of this. I have this bright cleaner. This is like retainer cleaner, so I will use this on my Invisalign liners. I have these floss sat jays. So these are a really nice item because they're just individual flosses. Anti-diarrhea pills. I have two hair ties. I have a packet of pills. So there's some Advil, Benadryl, Tylenol PM. I have a couple regular band-aids. I have some potable aqua tablets. So if my water filter for some reason would fail and I needed to filter water, I would be able to these as a backup water filter. I have several pairs of my contacts that I will be carrying so I can make sure I change those out when I'm not wearing my glasses. I have a Sawyer Squeeze O-ring. I have a pair of earplugs if I need to sleep in a shelter next to somebody that's snoring. I don't usually wear earplugs but we'll see. I might need them on trail. I have a few Q-tips, a pair of tweezers, so this is Tenacious Tape for repairs. I have a bigger Band-Aid KT tape. Thank you, sir. I have these alcohol prep wipes. One packet of this BioFreeze gel. So just in case in a spurt of the moment situation. I have some of this moleskin. And then on the back of it, I have some Luco tape. Marley. I'm in the middle of taping. Hey, say hi. That kitty. The kitty, huh? Mm. Uh-oh, he's scratching me. He's scratch-a-ratching, huh? Mm. You're not ready for me to leave, huh? I also have this antiseptic. And then I am going to be carrying... This Cora cup, and I will use that for menstrual purposes. All right, so that is everything that is in my first aid kit, at least for now. I'll be carrying a Ziploc bag like this that will be used to carry my trash out at all times. And then I will also be carrying this Oak Sack Lope Sack. It's an odor proof bag, so if I need to store smellables in it, I will be able to do so um, and hopefully that will prevent any kind of rodents and so forth from trying to uh, get into my tent. I have a couple other items that I wanted to kind of get your opinion on. So I wanted to tell you the items, tell you my purpose for bringing them if I was to bring it, and then um, you guys could let me know if you think it's something that is worth the extra weight to bring. So the first thing is the Sea to Summit X mug. In my Invisalign treatment on trail, I wanted to use this as a way to soak my liners in the cleansing 
solution that I'm bringing. And I guess still do that in this pot here after I'm done making dinner and so forth. I guess it would be nice to have an extra mug for that purpose. It would be nice to have a mug to drink coffee out of rather than a pot, but uh, it's something that I could probably live without. Again, that's the C to Summit X mug. Girl care will be a big thing for me. It would be nice to have like an a special place to soak my liners at night. Uh, that's kind of what I do here at home. Not 100% sold on it because it is kind of like a luxury item. The next item is this Gold Bond Original Strength Body Powder. So I showed you guys earlier in the video that I was going to bring that Monistat Chafing Gel Powder and the Body Glide and I was even debating between the two of those. But I also think that a powder could be beneficial on trail not only for like greasy hair but also just you know to freshen up with it. is it worth the extra one ounce i also have vaseline all over body balm a little bit on the heavier side it comes in at 1.4 ounces could be like multiple purposes I may throw them in the box and Ask my mom to send them to me. I'm going to probably hold off on these items, but I would like to hear if you guys have used these items or you think that they would be beneficial for me to start with. My cousin Phil, who is a triple crown hiker, recommended that I leave at home this luxury Sea to Summit pillow. I think it's in it about two ounces. It's an inflatable pillow. I actually last night used it um but I ended up switching out for my puffy anyway so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna leave this at home if you guys think that's a no-no and you think I should have this then maybe you should share but this is one of the other things that I'm considering leaving at home because I feel like I'm gonna end up sending it home anyways just having a hard time leaving it at home the other thing that I didn't show you guys or you're probably wondering what I'm doing for camp shoes and that is another item that my cousin Phil, who again has the triple crown hiking experience, recommended that I leave at home. And that is a big um, item to leave at home because I know a lot of through hikers enjoy that comfort of being able to switch from their hiking shoes into a pair of camp shoes after um, spending miles on your feet all day long. As of right now, I don't have any camp shoes um, on my later pack list. I don't have any camp shoes in my pack. I am going to roll without the camp shoes. And then I guess the option is, is I could always readjust and pick up a pair of cheap Crocs or knockoff Crocs at a Walmart or Dollar General along the way. Um, if I really feel like it's something that I'm missing out on. Right now, I'm pretty sure those are the only things that I'm kind of like really pretty sure I'm leaving behind. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. All right, guys, I think that's pretty much it for gear. Um, if I have anything else that I forgot, I'll hop back on. But yeah, I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you all the things that I will be carrying in my pack for six months from Georgia to Maine and give you an idea of what is needed. I hope you guys have a great day and stay tuned for my next video. Um, so let me know your thoughts on that. My brother and sister-in-law, Neil and Lauren. Um, I will be using this for, whoops. These two items, I may add it to my, Marley. Marley, go. I know this is probably like a luxury item to some, but honestly, like my skin needs hydrated. Like it, yeah, like I'm bringing this up. Marley's on my Therma Rest Pad. That's a no-no. Um, looking forward to, of course, having these because I need these to hike, right? Marley, over here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos.